is going on everybody welcome back to RC Car Garage and in today's video we are back again with the Hennessy Venom GT 1.8 scale toy grade RC car uh, I want to apologize for I want to apologize to everybody for my voice right now I have a cold and um, I've been trying to beat this thing for the past couple years I all fast couple years <laughs> past couple days um, so in the last video that I took out the uh, toy grade car, toy grade RC car, I believe we ran like a uh, 11 miles an hour. I misread it. 11.6. We already gained <laughs> miles an hour. So apparently I gained, I went to 18 miles an hour. I believe it was 11, not the 18. It could have been the 18. I'm probably misreading it right now. And um, it's been a couple days since I did that video. And excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, it's been a couple days since I made that video. And uh, when I made that video, we I thought that the issue that happened was the gearing completely went kaput. Uh, so I thought that, hey, all right, gearing's done for. I'm not going to be able to, unless I can somehow find gearing for this thing, um, this thing's pretty much done. Luckily, I took this thing apart the other day, and, uh, hey, I can actually say, here, I'll get a close-up for you guys, all the gears in here are good. Everything is good with the gearing in this car. The issue that I ended up having with this was this little guy. So when I got the motor, the brushless motor for this thing, I uh, really wasn't paying attention to the size. I'll be dead honest. I wasn't paying attention to the size. I know I needed something small, but I didn't want anything too big. And um, I was looking at the like 118 scales, 116 scales brushless motors to put in there because that's exactly what would end up fitting right in this area here for the motor. So the size of the stock motor that I ended up finding out when I got my uh, digital caliper here, this motor is 28 millimeters wide and uh, this one here, which is the one that was in the uh, car, I think it's 24 millimeters, so it's a lot smaller than the stock motor, as you guys can see there. So what I wound up doing, it was I ended up measuring this, and I ended up looking up to see the uh, motor that was about this size, and I found the motor. Uh, I should have done this in the beginning, which was my fault, and I didn't do it. But uh, so the culprit for this thing to stop running in that last video was this motor. Um, this thing, it's not, it, it's motor's done. This motor is just 100% done. I, um, I basically burned out the motor <laughs> on this thing. Uh, I don't know if it is a bad motor or if it was because of all the cogging from the ESC that burned out the motor, but this motor is basically done for. Or could it have been because the car is a lot bigger than what this motor was intended for? I think that's what it was. So, hey, it is what it is, man. I just wanted to see how fast I can get this thing to go. The other issue that we have with the uh, with this car is the tires. So these rear tires do not have any grip at all. If anybody can hit me down in the comments section to let me know what I can use, I think WD-40 or something, I don't know, try to make these tires a little stickier. Uh, if anybody knows anything that I could do to try to get these tires um, to grip better, that would help me a lot. Uh, I just kind of find out now that these tires aren't even glued on here. So as you guys can see, I'm pulling it away from the from the rim. These things aren't even glued. So would I be able to find a tire to fit on here um, 
to be able to get a good run out of it. That's an idea. That's what I might end up trying to do. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a 2.8 tire? I don't know. I got to measure this, this tire and see what I can get to put on here to, um, to get some grip out of it. Because as soon as I hit the throttle with it, this thing just wants to go sideways. And um, I want it to go straight. I don't, want, I don't want it to go sideways. So anyway, so this motor that I got is a BL motor, four poles, 7200 kV, uh, 2430 brushless motor, as you guys can focus, focus, there we go, as you guys can see right there, that's the motor that I got, and um, that is the culprit of why this thing stopped working, so uh, you guys probably be able to hear it, I'm not sure, but here's what's going on with it, I'm going to be very quiet right now. Sorry, that was me burping. So I'm spinning it, and you can hear it right there, that little click. So basically, this motor just like seized up. Um, and I thought that it was the gearing that ended up <laughs> being the issue that was in the car. But luckily, that was not the problem. So what I wound up doing was I went on to Amazon. And um, I'll look for another motor. Again, I'm not trying to go expensive. Um, I'm not trying to go with expensive electronics for this thing. It's a toy grade car, man. I'm not trying to do anything crazy with it. And uh, just nothing like that. I'm just trying to get this thing to go a little faster than it was originally supposed to go. I'm trying to open up this packaging so I can show you guys what I got. Again, I did do... Sorry. Again, I did do the research this time. Which I should have done last time, but I was just too excited to get this thing going. So, I did do the research this time. And um, I am pretty sure that I got the right size motor. That the stock motor here again is 28 millimeters wide, and that 2430 is only 24 millimeters wide. Hence the reason why it says 2430 because it's 24 millimeters. Wow, really? <laughs> so I didn't even think about that until now. Again, guys, I am sick. I apologize for. Uh, my vocalization being the way it is right now, but I'm just trying to get over a cold, and um, it really hit me hard. Actually, New Year's Eve uh, was when it really hit me hard, and no, it's not COVID. It is not COVID. I just have a cold. Um, other than that, I feel fine. My body doesn't hurt. No aches, no nothing. I am 100% good, except for congestion and my throat being the way it is. No headaches, no nothing. I'm good. Uh, so what I wound up doing again was I went with a Surpass Hobby uh, brushless ESC and motor. So this motor, again, I did my research this time. This motor actually comes nicely packaged, as you guys can see, Surpass Hobby. I've seen Surpass Hobby around... Are they any good? I'm not sure. We are going to find out. So, I guess this is also a review of the Surpass Hobby um, brushless ESC and motor. So, this ESC is a Surpass Hobby waterproof ESC 35 amps. And this ESC is about the same size as the original, as the one that I got from the other cheapy one that I got. Now this motor, again, I did my research this time, people. This motor is a 2845 5900 kV motor. I just want to test something out. Okay, so they do fit in there. So I could use this ESC, but I'm not going to use the original ESC, the one you guys see right there in the corner, right there. So it's still on the car, and here is the new one, the Surpass Hobby. 
and I didn't even realize, but it also comes with a Dean's plug, so I'll be able to use my batteries no problem with this thing. And um, so I've seen Surpass Hobby around, and again, I got this off of, off of Amazon. I forget how much I paid for it, but I got it off of Amazon just so I can get this video out and get it going for you guys. And um, yeah, so I thought there was a little nick on here already, but no. So, I mean, the motor feels nice weighted. This one, not so much. This does not have that much great weight to it. But this one feels nicely weighted. I wish I had my scale over here. I'd weigh it right now. So I can see. Give me a second. All right, everybody. So, good news. I found... I'm sorry. That's the motor. I found my scale. So... I'm going to put this on the scale just to see how much this motor weighs compared to the um, to this one, the 24 millimeter one, and compare it to. All right, so I want ounces. Let's keep it on grams. All right, so come on, guys, check this out. So. Here we are. Alright, so here we are with the scale. And let's do the stock motor. Again, this is a stock motor that came with it. Let's see how much that weighs. 63.7 grams. Alright, so that's 63.7 grams. Just for shits and giggles. 168.6 and that's the HPI 55 turn 540 motor wait that's cheating that, wait a minute wait a minute that's cheating right there that's cheating so how much was it again with that with those screws on there 168.6 is that gonna make a difference probably I'm not sure 167.9 alright so those screws did make a difference on the way anyway let's um see Again, let's go back with the stock motor. Stock motor came in at 63.7 grams. And now the Surpass Hobby motor. hundred and sixteen point four. Why do you keep going down? Alright, three. Come on, man. Alright, let's throw it out. All right, let's do this again. Hundred fifteen point six seven grams. Now this burnt out one, I don't know where I put it. You guys see it over here anyway? There it is. So this burnt out one that I uh, put on there first. Let's just zero this out again. Dang, this thing only weighs. 43.8 grams so 43.8 grams comparing that to hundred sixteen point four grams so zero it out do this again all right this scale is useless 115.1 grams all right let hold on hold on hold on I don't want to see Whatever, 116 grams or 115.8, 115.8 grams, that one, and I had a 43.6 gram motor in there. So yeah, I think that motor was just way too small. So 63.7 grams, and this motor, 116.6. As you guys see, it's zeroed out. And it keeps on giving me different readings. Now it's 116.9, whatever. Alright, so you guys get the idea. The motor that was in there was way too small. Which I believe somebody did say something go... I don't remember if somebody did say something about the motor being too small. But uh, now we know for a fact that motor was just way too small for this. And I haven't even tested to see, as you guys just saw, I just opened up the packaging 
and this motor should and it does fit in here perfectly well my friends all right so this motor fits in here perfectly well yep all right awesome so I'm able to use so I put this motor in here and right there and I'm able to use the screw holes you can't see because it's really dark again I'm, I apologize for the lighting in here it sucks um, so the screw holes for the motor mount is going to work perfectly now what I'm going to wind up doing is uh, again I already took all of this apart as you guys can see this is the chassis of the car I already took all of this apart and I already took all of this apart so what I am going to wind up doing now is I'm going to take the ESC out I'm taking the ESC out I'm going to put this motor into the uh, the car the other thing I ended up doing uh, so I had to figure out what the gearing was for this what the pitch was for these gears that are in the um, that are in the rear what I ended up doing yeah, I okay, I understand this is a hack job, but I was just trying to get this thing to go. So what I ended up doing was I screwed a hole. This is the uh, pinion gear that came with the stock motor. It came on the stock motor. This is the pinion gear that came on the stock motor. So I took it off, and I drilled a hole right there. As you guys can see, I drilled a hole, and I put a grub screw in there. When I did that, I chipped tooth on one side only of the, where I put the grub screw. So hopefully the camera focuses good for you guys so you guys can see. But right in here, if you guys can see it right there, there's a tooth missing on this side. But on the opposite side, the, there's a tooth there. So I wound up using this uh, grub screw. And uh, it meshed fine. And it was that was not the reason why it kept on clicking like that. Uh, it was the ESC. I believe it was the ESC, or it could have been the motor that was just cogging way too much, and it sounded like it was stripping the gears. Which, as you guys can see here, none of the gears on this thing are stripped. I'll just go all the way around for you guys to see it. This one right here has a full uh, 44, 42 teeth on this um, pinion, um, I mean on the spur gear is that, yeah <laughs> so on that spur gear it has a total of 42 teeth so I had to find out what the uh, pitch was for it so I could get a grub screw a grub screw so I could get the correct pinion gear for this thing and what I did was I again I just went on Amazon man and I um and this was at like, I don't know, maybe 10, 11 o'clock at night when I ordered these things. Um, so I went on to Amazon and I ordered some uh, pinion gears here. So these are 32-pitch uh, pinion gears, which is what I found out that these gears are. These gears are a 32-pitch um, gear. This one is not. So I don't know how they ended up getting it to mesh or whatever. But I couldn't get the right pitch for that gear. And I've been looking and looking. And uh, the other thing is that, if I can find it here now. So this gear, so this gear right here is a 14 tooth pinion gear. And what I have with me now is... If it focuses, come on, focus, focus, focus. 14 to 32 pitch pinion gears. You guys can see right there. So this should. Yeah. Yeah. This, this lines up perfectly. Lines up perfectly, guys. So these gears, the 32 pitch, matches perfectly to this. Because that's where...
this is going to meet. It's not 100% perfect, but yeah, it is. Yep, it is 100% perfect. So I ended up doing the math this time. I ended up doing the uh, research on it. And uh, I got the right pinion gear for this thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all this back together, put the new ESC, the new motor on, and get this thing going. And uh, I'm not going to go outside with it right now for the main fact that it's raining. So I, uh, again, me having a cold going outside of the rain, not a good match, not a good idea, even though I could put on my jacket and everything, but I don't want to get wet because it's raining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this old ESC out. I'll probably end up saving it because I could probably use another motor and just put the motor on there. Um, my main idea was to just get a brushless motor, put it on this ESC, but with all the cogging that it had, I didn't want to risk it and burn out this motor. Um, I want to get a good run out of this motor. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this, and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, so we are back, and I have gotten the motor connected to the rear end of this thing, and this thing ha <laughs> so I'm excited. All right, so let me just show you guys what I wound up doing. So I greased up the gearing in here, as you guys can see. Put a pinion on. This is a uh, 32 pitch. 32 pitch. I believe it's 14 teeth um, pinion gear that I put in here. I believe. 13. Let me check. 14. No. No, that's not. That's a smaller pinion that I put in there. 12 tooth. It's a 12 tooth pinion that I put in there. Um, I wasn't able to put a 14 tooth even though the one that came with it, this one, is a 14 tooth. So I had to put a 12 tooth uh, gear on that. I wanted to put the 14 tooth but I'm not going to be able to. So what I wound up doing is as you guys can see here, I ended up greasing up the gearing in here um, just to get this thing to run smooth. So the grease that I use, it's what I had in my garage. It's <laughs> engine assembly lube. Uh, it works for crankshafts, camshafts, gears, bearings, valve stems, lifters, push rods, in all areas of rotational and sliding contact. So I think this will work. Pretty sure this will work. So this is what I used on my gears. It's not what I was looking for, but it's what I have, and it's what I'm going to use. So whatever. Now, again, this is the motor that I put on here is a 5900 kV 28 something something something. I don't know. It's a 2840 or something like that um, motor. So, now that I got that motor on the rear end here, I'm going to start putting all this together, put the rear end back in the chassis, and put a battery in this thing and test it out. See how we're going to do. I'm still trying to figure out something for these tires, trying to make them a little stickier. Um, if anybody knows anything, let me know. I can measure out the rim. I can try to pull one of these tires off and see, but uh, let me know. So let me go ahead and put this back together, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so we are back in action. Um, so as you guys can see, I have my two-cell LiPo already connected to it. Everything's already connected onto this thing. I got the rear end back in place, and... Um, I just tested it, gave it a little test run uh, here on my uh, little table thing, and it's looking pretty damn good. <laughs> I will admit, it's looking pretty good, guys. Um, 
I'll be honest, it's not. The tires don't spin as fast as the uh, little 2400 series motor did. Because again, this was a uh, 7200 kV. This is only a 5900. So it doesn't spin as much. I'm guessing because of the pinion gear that I put on here, I'm going to see if I'm able to put in, I'm guessing, a bigger pinion. I have 12 to 16 turn uh, teeth, I'm sorry, 12 to 16 teeth pinion. And um, I'm thinking maybe go up to the 14 because I have a 12 tooth on right now. So if I can try to get that 14 tooth on here, it'll basically be like it was coming out from factory um, when this thing did come out. Well, when Toys R Us sold this thing so that's what I was trying to attempt doing but I'm going to uh, hit the throttle and I'll let you guys see what uh this thing sounds like <laughs> alright so I'm just going to warn you now if you had headphones on this is your warning if you have headphones on so here we go so you guys can see when I'm hitting the throttle and ready Go. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but every time I accelerate, the rear end here kind of like dips down a little bit. See if you guys can tell. All right, so as you guys see, we are back up and running with yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, as you guys see, we are back up and running with this bad boy. Um, I'm going to go ahead, put everything back together, and again, it's like, what, 9 o'clock at night? It's quarter after 9 at night, and uh, basically, I'm done for the night with this thing. I got this thing back together. What I did wind up doing differently from last time other than putting a 2800 series motor in it I locked the rear diff I just grabbed some hot glue and I just went to town in that diff I locked it up so hopefully <laughs> it's gonna drift a little bit <laughs> it might help with it going straight better uh, it might help better with it going straight I'm not 100% sure I don't think it will uh, usually when you lock up the rear diff, you kind of want it to go sideways. Like in drifting, you want to drift, you lock up your rear end, and both wheels spin at the same time so you can get that kick out. Will we be able to drift with this thing? I don't know. We're going to try and see. Um, I'm still looking for a nice wide open parking lot um, around the Philly area where I can take this thing out and not crash into any cars like you guys saw in the last video right here. So I don't want that to happen because <laughs> it's colder out and I don't want to break this body more than it already is. Like, as you guys can see here on one side, it's already got that mirror busted up. Of course, we still got it on the passenger side. So, I don't want to end up doing that. The last time that I did take this out, um, I put my hand underneath the car here, and it kind of felt like it was hot. So, I think what happened with this motor, not just the fact that it's too small, but also it got too hot, and it just said, I'm done. So, because, again, there is, once the body goes on it, there it really is no way for air to get into it so what I'm planning on doing now is these ends right here I'm thinking about cutting this out here and over here 
to let some air get into there to try to cool off the motor and cool off this whole rear end some because this is all closed off so that's where basically that's where we're at right now um yeah that's basically where we're at right now uh, again i want to apologize for my voice because i've been having this cold for the past couple days and it has not been getting any better no it is not covid again i like i said earlier it's not covid but um Hopefully I do get better soon, and uh, that's another reason why I haven't taken this thing out. With that being said, guys, gals, you all have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.